the dry sand molding in the dry sand molding during the pouring stage moisture is not present first of all why we have to go for dry sand molding in the case of the grain sand molding moisture is present just before pouring and if the moisture is excess it will result in pin holes on the casting there will be so many of small small holes will be there these we call as pin holes so this is one of the major drawback in the green sand molding so most of the times many castings are rejected because of this presence of the pin holes and another one is the strength sometimes may not be adequate if the moisture is not controlled properly the strength may not be adequate so to overcome these problems sometimes we go for dry sand molding in which there will be no moisture just before pouring we will be completely drying out the moisture present in the mold and how this is done and before that there will be types types of dry sand molding one is skin drying it means initially we make the mold then only the surface of the cavity we will be drying out by using gas torches or infrared lamps or by passing hot air we will be drying just the skin of the cavity just the surface of the cavity and in another type we completely dry the mold we call it as complete mold drying so for this purpose we use ovens electric ovens we keep the mold inside the oven for few hours during which the moisture will be evaporated and the complete total mold is free from moisture next one let us see the shell molding and in this shell molding what are the features here the metallic pattern is used the molding material is fine sand plus thermosetting resin and usually it will be phenol formaldehyde and in 100 kg of fine sand we mix 5 kg of phenol formaldehyde this acts as the resin since we are using fine sand the surface finish of the cavity will be good the surface finish of the casting finally we are going to obtain will be good and as i already told the pattern is always metallic one in shell molding and during the molding process we heat the pattern about 180 degrees centigrade let us see the steps involved in shell molding so this is the uh, uh, one half of the pattern this is half of the pattern here we can see so this is made up of metal initially there is a dump box in which there is resin plus fine sand phenol formaldehyde plus fine sand is there and we place the metallic pattern here and this metallic pattern is heated up now we make this box upside down the mixture of resin and fine silica sand is falling on the heated pattern then what happens a small layer of the resin and the fine sand will be melting and it will be making a thin layer around the pattern like this now again we make it upside down now the sand is falling down here now we can see this is the pattern half of the pattern and a thin layer of the resin and the fine sand is sticking here now we will this we will put it inside a oven 
for drying purpose. So this shell will be dried up. This we will take and put it in, in the oven. So that it will gain additional strength. After that we are removing this shell. So we have created a cell, shell whose cavity will be similar to that of the pattern. In the same way we create another shell using for that we do not have to use another pattern using the same pattern we can create another shell in the same way and these two shells are joined here and they are clamped here we can see they are clamped and here we can see the pouring basin through the pouring basin we pour the molten metal and here here we can see the backing material because he, the, this is shell made up of resin and the fine silica sand and when we pour the molten metal because of the pressure of the molten metal this may break for that purpose we put some backing material in this box there is some backing material this can be sand so that this sand will be acting as the support for the shells they support when we when the molten metal is poured the shells may not break with the support of the backing material now it is ready for pouring and what are the advantages of this molding process of this shell molding process one is complex parts can be produced and another one is dimensional accuracy is very high in the case of the sand molding the dimensional accuracy is very poor because the surface of the cavity is having some irregular surfaces rough surface that's why because the dimensional accuracy is not high we give some allowance machining allowance to the pattern so that the casting finally we are going to obtain will be larger than the actual size then we will machine it we can conclude that in the case of the green sand casting the dimensional accuracy is not high in fact it is poor we have to struggle a lot to get the correct dimension but in the case of the shell molding the dimensional accuracy is high and another advantage is surface finish is good in the case of the green sand molding the surface finish of the casting is not good because of the rough surface of the sand cavity because of the rough surface of the pattern the final surf, surf, uh, rough sur surface finish of the casting will be poor but in the case of the shell molding the surface finish is good we can get a surface finish of this much order 1.25 microns to 3.75 microns and the molds are of light weight in the case of the green sand molding for if we have to make 1 kg of the casting we have to use about 4 kg of sand so the molding boxes will be very heavy so it is sometimes if we are making large castings it is very difficult to carry the molding boxes from one place to another place maybe from molding shop to melting shop but here the molds are only shells so their weight is very less so that is another advantage and another advantage is they can be stored for so much of time in the case of the green sand molding once we make the mold once we assemble the drag box and cope box within few hours we have to pour the molten metal if we store the molding box for several days it loses its strength on the other hand 
in the case of the shell molding we can store these shells for even months together maybe today there may not be any requirement but we are anticipating some order maybe after 3 months after 3 months we may get an order for some 10000 pieces so after 10 to, after 3 months that time if we have to make 10000 shells it is so difficult but these shells can be prepared well in advance they can be stored so that when the time comes we can clamp them together and straight away we can pour the molten metal so that is another advantage of the shell molding next one it requires less space in the case of the green sand molding so much of space is required for making the pattern there will there will be one shop pattern making shop for making the mold there will be one shop molding shop for pouring there will be another shop and for melting the molten metal there will be another shop and after solidification is over we break the sand for that there will be another shop fettling shop after that there will be another shop for cleaning likewise in the case of the green sand castings the space required is very large but in the case of the shell molding the space required is very less that is another advantage and what about the yield in the case of the green sand molding what is the casting yield casting yield means suppose if we are making 10 kg of the casting we have to pour about 13 kg of molten metal so we can define this way the casting yield casting is yield is defined as the ratio of the weight of the casting divided by weight of the poured metal whole thing multiplied by 100 that is the casting yield so for sand castings the casting yield will be between 70 percent to 80 percent but here the casting yield will be high and sand metal ratio is relatively low in the case of the sand casting sand metal ratio is 4 is to 1 means for making 1 kg of the casting we have to use 4 kg of sand here how much sand we are using only to make the shell sand required is very less so this is another advantage and it requires lower fettling costs fettling means after the casting is solidified there will be extra projections the metal is solidified in this proof the metal is solidified in the gating system the metal is solidified in the riser these are not parts of the casting these have to be removed for that purpose we have to use some machining process and that costs us more we have to put more efforts we have to use more labor but in the case of the shell molding the cost involved for fettling is less compared to the sand casting and other conventional castings and it has got some disadvantages also it is not economical for small scale production because the pattern is made up of metal and there will be arrangement for heating of the pattern suppose if we have to make only five castings for making the five castings we make a metallic pattern and we incorporate heating system and after that that costly pattern that pattern for which we have spent more money for which we have spent so much of efforts will be gone so this is not economical for small producing few castings this is useful for large scale production not for small scale production and what about the cost of these resins phenol formaldehyde it is costly it is not cheap like green sand it is not cheap like clay this is costly and this is suitable only for small castings this is not suitable for heavy castings the maximum weight of the casting that we can make using shell molding is 10 kg of course it is giving uh, some certain advantages 
surface finish is good dimensional accuracy is good but we can make only small castings up to 10 kg and its applications automotive rocker arms and valves cam shafts bushings valve bodies spacers brackets bearing caps etc this is an important casting process which was developed during second world war 